How's it going? This is Hans Strazina with the Gunderman Group coming back to you with another video today. If you clicked on this video, you're clearly interested in pocket listings, how to find them, what they are, and what it means to you in the East Bay real estate market. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. Uh, so uh, let's just get into this thing. Simply put, uh, pocket listing uh, is a house that is for sale more or less by secret. And uh, the, the seller and the listing agent who has signed the contract with that seller uh, has not advertised it publicly to the greater population of all buyers and sellers on the internet and with a sign and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so simply put, it's something that someone has in their pocket. Uh, it's, it's not, a, they only know about it, they tell a couple of people about it, but they don't blast it out to the entire world. Uh, and there's a couple of reasons that, that these come up. And I wanna name a couple right out of the gate because a lot of people ask me like, in this crazy seller's market that we're in, why on earth would anyone even consider doing a pocket listing? Well, here's a couple of reasons. Number one, it costs an awful lot of time and money to stage and prepare a house. Uh, simply, when we bring our whole crew in, uh, paint, stage, floors, lights, etc., it takes two to four weeks in most cases and costs anywhere between fifteen to thirty thousand uh, dollars to prep and stage a house. Uh, not to mention the disruption to your life uh, as a seller, whether you've moved out or you're still living in that chaos, it can be really, really chaotic. So in an effort to avoid that, a seller might go to their broker and say, hey, if you bring me a buyer privately um, and we get something around this price or get exactly this number, then we'll sell the house and we won't go through all that nonsense of advertising and uh, getting back into open houses and photos and all of that stuff, okay? So it's a kind of a convenience factor. Um, there's also uh, a, a group of people, and this is very prevalent around the holiday season, November and December into early January, of people who say something to the extent of like, I'm planning on selling, I'm gonna go on the market, but I'm not ready to do it quite yet. However, if someone were to give me you know, a million dollars today, uh, I would take that and I would just be done. I wouldn't have to go for all of it. Um, it's a it's a make me move price, if you will. Um, and so sometimes people will opt for that because they, they're relocating, but not for a month or two, um, or they're waiting for the season to turn, like in the case of the end of the year. And if they get their buyer at their price, they would be willing to transact without going through all of the stuff I said on the first step. Um, and simply put, uh, just go with a little bit of an easier transaction. Now, uh, there is a group of people who are simply just incredibly private. They don't want the entire world looking at the photos of their house. They don't want everyone traipsing through their property. And so privacy is key to some people. Although in my experience, that is a very small group of individuals who actually, for privacy reasons, choose to list this way. So let's talk about you as a buyer, potentially, what it is that you might be looking for uh, when it comes to pocket listings. How do you get them? What's different about them? What's important to know? All of that kind of stuff. When you're talking to your agent, uh, in either working with them in the beginning or interviewing people, always find out how they come into contact with pocket listings. Generally speaking, these are very relationship driven transactions, meaning uh, the agent on the seller side and the agent on the buyer side know each other somehow. Maybe they're in the same office. Maybe they just work in a very similar geography and have a great relationship, uh, you, you know, that sort of thing. And information starts to kind of travel around in those circles a little bit, whether it's formal or informal, um, you kind of need to figure out how you can get into the flow of some of that information. And if you know for sure where you wanna be, it really helps if uh, your agent knows who the top listing agents are in that area and has a good relationship with them because there's a decent chance that you might then get an opportunity to look at one of these pocket listings or something off market, right? And one caveat to this is within the last year or so, the MLS and California Association of Realtors and National Association of Realtors have really started to change their stance and change their views on pocket listings and the exclusivity and all that stuff. People, broadly speaking, listings generally end up in the MLS, which is the multiple listing service, which is what I as an agent and everybody else subscribes to, to share the information about the listings that they have. Um, 
And when you have a pocket listing or a private listing of some kind, it doesn't go there because it then would be syndicated out to Redfin and Zillow and all the websites all over the world. And if the seller doesn't want that or you don't want to go live yet for whatever reason, um, but the seller's willing to transact, it's a pocket listing and therefore you don't have that access to the information. So a lot of the rules have been changing relative to advertising. So generally speaking, at least right now in the Bay Area, if you start to advertise in any capacity to the public, it has to end up in the MLS quickly. So they came up with this, uh, this status called coming soon. You'll see this on Zillow sometimes, um, and you have to search for it a little bit, but it shows up as a coming soon property as opposed to an active property. And what that means is it hasn't actually officially started adding up days on the MLS. And so someone has put it in the MLS uh, has said it will be coming. It's just not quite ready yet, but we're open to getting a little exposure now or potentially transacting now. So that is a status that you really need to be focused on and pay attention to in your automatic searches or on your Zillow searches or whatever it is that you're doing. Um, the coming soon is critical. And then of course, there is the good old fashioned networking component. I'm not talking about just calling every agent in town, figuring out what they have coming up. I'm talking about meeting neighbors. I'm talking about finding out uh, who in the community might be selling, who knows who, uh, how you have connections with those people, and generally being social. Uh, one thing I always recommend is someone is really looking seriously at a neighborhood, go take an afternoon, even just an hour or two, and go walk around the neighborhood, go talk to people, tell them you're thinking about buying in this area see what they say. They could, they're probably gonna say, oh, well, the Joneses down the street are thinking about selling. I, th I think I saw a moving truck out front and I think they said they're going to Idaho or something. You might go and then try and meet the Joneses and see what happens, you know what I'm saying? So there is a little bit of legwork, but in this intensely competitive market, it could be worth it. So keep that in mind. Talk to your agent look for the coming soons, and then just do some boots on the ground research. Because when we're talking about this level of competition and transaction, putting an edge in your favor in any way is absolutely critical. So hopefully you got some value out of that. If you did, subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up, because I'm going to continue to put out weekly content like this, and you're not going to want to miss it. So without any further ado, this is Hans Strazina with the Gunderman Group at Keller Williams Luxury International signing off for now. See you guys on the next one.